I'm a teacher, so that's what you're going to get today. So let's look at 3 John 2. Beloved, everybody say beloved. I pray uh, that you may prosper. I think the King James Version says, I pray above all things. Everybody say above all things. Pray above all things that you may prosper. And there it says, in all things, and be in health just as your soul prospers. So uh, John here, the Apostle John, is uh, saying, I pray about you and over you and for you that you will prosper and be in health. He's saying, uh, my, my greatest hope is that you will, uh, all will be well with you and that you will have good health. And that's my prayer for you for 2021. How many of you received that prayer? Amen. Amen. Uh, but let me, before we get into that, and I know Pastor Dan and Laura are going to be emphasizing this uh, this year, and I think it's terrific. I agree to 100%. I tell you, when they teach and preach, somebody asked me one time, I don't know if they was trying to lay a trap for me or not, but a few months ago, I said, well, we were listening online to Pastor Dan. What, what do you think about his preaching? I say, I agree a thousand percent. What do you mean? It's the Word of God. I may do it different. I may have a different style. I may, whatever, whatever. Those kinds of things are, you know, that's just subjective. But uh, I agree a thousand percent. And every time I go home, every I, I, I'm tired of texting them, and uh, I think they get tired of me texting them. Well, that was a great message because, you know, after a while, uh, they may think, well, is he just really meaning it? But I do. I really mean it. And I think we've got a good message here, and I'm excited about this message. But let me, before I get into that, let me say that the greatest thing, and you know this, is our redemption that is in Christ. How many of you agree with that? The best thing that God ever did for me was to send Jesus to the cross at Calvary to die for my sins that I might be born again. Amen? My sins be forgiven. Every morning when I wake up, I say, uh, the first thing I say is to the Lord, uh, I thank you that my sins are forgiven. I say that every day. That's the first thing. Before I, before I pray for anything else in my prayer time, I say, Lord, I thank you that my sins are forgiven. Even if I sinned a lot the night before, on purpose. How many of you know you usually sin on purpose? And, uh, and, and rebellion. I mean, there's all kinds of sins. Or you just A lot of times I just do what I want to do and don't want to do what God wants to do. Is there anybody here? I've told this story a hundred times. Bella was about three or four. She had a little cheerleader uniform on and she was trying to get on the basketball court and her mama said, Bella, come over here to me. And she said, I don't want to do what you want me to do. I want to do what I want to do. I thought, well, she's describing me. Amen? And she's describing human nature. So uh, I thank God for that. Then I thank God that I'm born again and that I'm saved and that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? Even though I sinned the night before, I'm still the righteousness of God in Christ. I say I shouldn't have sinned. I shouldn't have been unrighteous. But I'm still the righteousness of God because I have a relationship with God. That doesn't change. As long as I've got that secure, all this other stuff, then we'll deal with this later. Amen? We'll deal with these other topics once we make sure that's secure. So let's secure that today on this first Sunday in uh, 2021. Say this with me. Say, Lord, I thank you that my sins are forgiven, that I'm born again, that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Because Jesus went to the cross, shed his blood, went to the grave, and rose again that I might have eternal life. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, now we got that done. Amen? Now let's get into the rest of it. Let's get into what we call the felt needs. Amen? So uh, John, it's interesting. John, now contrary to belief, if you, take the, if you take Hebrews out of Paul's column, which many scholars do, John actually wrote most of the New Testament. The Gospel of John, 1, 2, 3, John, and the book of Revelation. Closely in second place would be Paul, and then close behind him would be the uh, physician Luke. Now, uh, I say that because I just want to emphasize that John is a major major player in the Gospels or in the, in the New Testament. And he, he knew a little something about uh, prosperity. He knew a little something about, um, I would say, uh, knew a little something about uh, good health. And, uh, you know, uh, Jesus, when he was on the cross, 
told John to take care of his mother. How many of you remember that? So he was kind of Mary's caretaker. So he went to church with Mary. Now, how many of you would like to go to church with the mother of Jesus? Amen. How many of you would like to be Timothy, who was the pastor of the church at Ephesus, and uh, Jesus' mother was a, a, co a member of your congregation? How many of you, how many of you know that would make you kind of nervous preaching every morning or every Sunday? I'd be a little nervous there if, if this was Mary, the mother of Jesus, you know. But uh, so John, John knew a little something uh, about what's going home, uh, what's going on here, and he, he knew about prosperity. As a matter of fact, uh, many of you have probably never heard of this place, but it's a city called Sephorus or Sephorus, and uh, it was uh, a magnificent city built by Herod Antipas, and uh, it was uh, a, a, an, an outstanding. He 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 made it. It was called the ornament of Galilee or the jewel of Galilee. And uh, Herod uh, was, Antipas was Herod's son, and he, uh, he went all out to make this place, this city, the most beautiful city in the world and the most prosperous. It was a very prosperous city. It had all of the educational, it had all the cultural. It had a theater. It had uh, the marketplace. I mean, it was a magnificent city. And many uh, craftsmen and artisans went there and built this city. Many people believe that when Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 5 about the city on the hill, that he was talking about the city of Sephorus, which was six kilometers from Nazareth where he grew up, which is about three and a half miles. That's not very far, and even back in those days, they would travel to these cities. Now, another interesting point, this is not in the Bible, this is history believes that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was born in Sephorus or Sephorus, that her parents lived there. So it would be natural that Jesus would have gone to this city to visit his in-laws. How many of you know he probably had to go visit his in-laws just like everybody else? Amen. I don't mean uh, uh, I don't mean Jesus, but Joseph. How many of you know Joseph went there? So if Joseph went, then Jesus probably went. Don't you imagine? So uh, Jesus probably learned a lot of things about life. And, and, uh, and how people are and uh, rich people. There are a lot of rich people there. There were the actors there in the theater. He learned about the memory, talked about the hypocrites, where, which he was talking about people who act. And, and so uh, it's pretty clear that he probably spent some time here. So uh, John probably got filled in on a lot of these things. And he understood that Jesus was not a poor carpenter who built little stick chairs and cribs for babies. He was an artisan, and there was a shortage of timber in this area, so he probably was more of a, uh, a craftsman in stone and building, uh, and, and he probably, and his father Joseph probably went to this city because it sucked the good people. You know what I'm saying? The, I, I remember, do you remember my friend uh, Ambassador Hamdi Saleh? Do you remember him from Egypt? He was telling us one time we were at a meeting with him, and he said all of the, uh, we were talking about, um, actually, we were talking, do you remember the guy in, um, the, I never watched his TV show, but the, 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 the TV show Cheers, remember John Ratzenberger, the guy was, was the mailman, anybody remember that show, Cheers, he was the mailman? So we were at a meeting, and he was there, and he was talking about how his son had gone into plumbing. This is a Hollywood actor, and his son went into plumbing. He was proud of him because he chose to do what he wanted to do. And Hamdi mentioned that all of the good tradesmen, plumbers, electricians, were going to the Gulf because the, in Saudi Arabia because that's where all the oil was and that's where they got the good jobs. Well, how, you understand that if Jesus was three and a half miles and Joseph was three and a half miles from this place and they were, how many believe Jesus was a good craftsman? Yeah. Then this drew them to that place. This is not in the Bible. This is believed to be history. So I'm not trying to make something up here. I'm trying to make a point that Jesus was a prosperous person. They may not have been a, what we would call a millionaire today, but he was not poor. Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus was not poor. Number two, John wrote the book of John, which has the 14 miracles of Jesus. He, he knew a little bit about health and healing, would you say? So uh, to the title of my message today, the first title was, if you saw it on uh, line, was Five Things You Can Do and Prosper. Go ahead and put that up. Five Things You Can Do to Prosper and Be in Health in 2021. And then I got to thinking as I read 3 John 2, it says, 
that I pray that you would prosper and be in health as your what prospers. Everybody say soul. So I changed the title and I said five things or five spiritual things you could do to prosper and be in health in 2021. Because see here today, I could stand up here and give you some good dietary suggestions. How many of you would like for me to do that this morning? And as soon as I get off uh, on telling you you shouldn't eat as much bacon as you're eating, some of you would leave. So I'm going to stay away from the dietary uh, advice this morning. Or if I get on the exercise advice. How many of you know nobody likes to talk about exercise? But we make our list. How many of you are going to walk more or run some or do some exercise in the year 2021? See, you already got your, uh, you already got your uh, resolution set. Well, that's good. All of these things are good. Natural things are good, but we need to keep our, our mind on spiritual things. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm, this, this month I will be entering my 45th year of running. I've been running for 45 years, and my wife could tell you I've never missed, in over 40 years, I've never missed running in a week. And in, in every week for, what is that, 2,000 weeks or something, I've never missed running in a week because of sickness or a disease or because of any other thing. As a matter of fact, I have no pain in my joints and I'm blessed, amen? And you know what I do every day? I say I have no pain in my joints. I have no pain in my body. I'm, all of my organs function, all, all of my systems are working perfectly. Can somebody say amen? amen. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm gonna, and, and exercise is good, but here's what the Bible says about exercise. That bodily exercise profits how much? A little. Everybody say a little. So it's good to uh, have uh, good financial advice or to get advice from your friends about your prosperity. See, prosperity is not just money. It's about when things are well with your family, with your job, with your business, with whatever you set your hand to. You can get a lot of good natural advice, and I believe in that. I believe in getting good legal advice. Do you know how many messes I clean up as a probate lawyer because people didn't listen to somebody that could have helped them, give them just a little simple legal advice? How many messes people get into? So you need to listen to natural advice. You need to follow natural health practices. But the bottom line is you need more than that. Can somebody say amen? We've got to have the spiritual aspect of this. So let's look into these five things that I would say that you need and five spiritual things that you need to prosper and be in health in 2021. Number one, everybody say number one. Get under the word. Get under the word. Everybody say get under the word. Okay, I'm going to add something to this. Get under the word of faith. Put that up there. Get under, don't just get under the word, but get under the word of faith. Amen? I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of great words. The Bible, you, you can learn a lot of things. I remember, I was thinking about this. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed about this. Pastor Bob, when he started the church, and he had to be gone one Sunday after we had been here a little while, and uh, I was kind of, you know, his right-hand man, you might say, and he asked me to uh, preach on a Sunday morning. And uh, do you know what my topic was? And there's nothing wrong with this. It's a good topic, but it was not. My, my topic was women in ministry. <laughs> I mean, that's a good topic. I believe in women in ministry. I believe in women preachers. And that's, that was my point and all. But that probably wasn't what we needed to hear on a Sunday morning. That would have been a topic in a conference or something. Maybe a Wednesday night teaching. But that was my and 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 so you can get a lot of good messages that are uh, you know they they uh, have meaning and they uh, encourage you and it's the word of God etc cetera, etc cetera. but it but it's not necessarily what you need right then it's not necessarily going to help you advance those are topics th th there's so many topics that we can teach on you can't do it all on Sunday morning so what most pastors try to do is hit the needs where the people are how many of you know the needs for people are primarily in these areas here? Can you say amen? That's what Pastor Darren and Laura are trying to help us with. So number one, you need to get under the word of faith. And, and to do that, first of all, you've got to get in, the, in a church where the word of faith is taught. Can somebody say amen? amen. Now, I'll, I'll tell you this. Amanda and I came here in 1981. We came six weeks after our church started here. And uh, we were looking for something. We were hungry. We were uh, getting into the 
the, the Holy Spirit, and, and we were inspecting all of that and investigating, you know, the, the truth of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and all of those things. And we walked through the doors of the building over here, and Pastor Bob and his family, they were really not only anointed, God-called ministers of music, they were professionals, weren't they, Sandy? These folks were professional musicians. And you talk about great music. Uh, I mean, they, they were the best. And they were the best in town. I don't say that arrogantly, but it's, it, there's no question about it. So we came in, we enjoyed it, we loved it. It was different, different kind of music, et cetera. But when Pastor Bob taught the word, and I'll say this, in all deference to Pastor Bob, and he would agree with me here, he was not the best teacher at that time. He was a musician. He was anointed to be a musician. He got better and he became a pastor. But at the time, he was just teaching the word of God. You know what brought us back to Melody? It wasn't the great music, which was good, and we, it, was an, it was icing on the cake. Miss Carol, what brought us back was the teaching of God's word. Amen? And is that correct, Manda? We said this is where we need to be because this, we've never heard this word before. We never heard that you could be healed. We never heard that. We always heard, if it be thy will. I remember once we got into this, I, we caught a lot of, you know, uh, uh, criticism, I guess you might say, especially on the healing on the healing message. And, and I remember talking to some folks and, and, and our loved ones, our family that were in, in, our, in our old church, and, and we would try to give a praise report about the Lord healing us, and oh my gosh, you should see the rolling of eyes and all. It was just, it was embarrassing. We would just, finally we'd just quit trying to talk about it. It was amazing. We had never heard it. They had never heard it. It, it set us free. It made us free. The Word of God changed. I'll tell you, the Word of God changed our lives and may have saved our lives. Your health, your life, your finances, your family, your children, your grandchildren may depend on where you go to church. It may. I'm telling you, it may. Now, I told this story a few weeks ago when I shared about pastor, uh, Pastor's Appreciation Month. So we have about 60 or 70 houses in our neighborhood, and there was an elderly widow lady that lived in, in our neighborhood, and I had noticed I hadn't seen her out for a while. This was many years ago. And uh, so I inquired, and I found out that she was in the nursing home. She was having to rehab or something. She'd gotten sick or hurt or something. So... Uh, I just I wanted to go visit her and pray for her. So I went to her to her room and we chatted a while and I was there to pray for her. And then her pastor and his associate came in and these are fine men. I'm telling you, they were friends of mine. I loved them. They had a great church, wonderful people. They're tops. They were tops. So they came in and chatted with her a while and they said, Well, we came to pray for you. Well, that's her pastor. I'm not going to say, Well, I was here first. So I just decided I'd hold hands with them while I was around the bed. So they prayed, you know, if that be thy will, and God give her strength to hold on, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. anyway, I'm not, it's not funny. It's, it's really sad. But <laughs> anyways, so when they finished, I didn't say amen to that. Somehow they got distracted talking to one another or somebody came or something. She looked at me right now and said, I didn't believe a word they said. She said, I don't know why they prayed that way. I didn't, I didn't believe a word they said. That's what she told me. I didn't say this to her. I wished I had her. Maybe it was too late. She's, is, I'm not going to try to rebuke the elder. I started to say, well, why do you go to church there? Well, probably because grandma went there. Probably because her boyfriend went there. Not hers, but, you know, sometimes you go because the boyfriend's there. Or you go because it's a whatever church. It, you know, there's a lot of reasons for going to, to a church, but you better pick one out. I said, you better, you better find a church. Listen, there are bigger churches. There, uh, I, it would be hard for me, Tracy, to find a church that has better music than we do. But there might be one out there somewhere. <laughs> Amen. There might be. There are bigger churches around here. Go to one of those. Go to a bigger church. That, what does that mean? Go to a whatever church. You name it. Richer church. Good. You know, we were always the outcast. I don't know if we still are or not, but they, we were always called that church. 
when I was a county coordinator here, the uh, and I and I decided to leave, and that was no, it was a big decision for me. I, I quit twice because uh, the first time I, I I wanted I couldn't I didn't have enough guts. I quit. I resigned and to come out here, and then I went back and said, "Can I please have my job back?" And then I quit again. But I knew the Lord had me. I knew people told me, "Well, you can pastor the church out at Melody and still have a job." I said, well, a lot of pastors can do that. I believe that by vocational pastors. I said, but I couldn't do it. I said, Melody would be stunted in growth. I have to give my life to it. And uh, so we, we gave up all of our benefits. We gave up all of the insurance for all of our kids. We gave up by cutting side my, I don't want to get in all that. But the, the, the bottom line is we quit all that. The sheriff went to talk with the clerk of court because he was kind of over me. And the sheriff said, has Frank Davis lost his mind? He's crazy. And people thought we always had kind of like, we were that, everybody say that church. I always wore that as a badge of honor. I did a funeral. I, was, I spoke at a funeral here in one of the major churches, traditional church, and one of the, the dean of pastors. And he, and he was a good guy. We were friends. But he was talking about, you know, and, uh, something, something. He said, and he said, we're all kind of, and we're all Christians or something, and looked over at me, and everybody laughed because he knew what they were referring to. Well, there's, they're that church. I mean, that was kind of a badge of honor after a while. If I'd have had any sense, if I'd have cared about my reputation, I would have gone somewhere else. We walked in the door. We heard the word of God. The music was good. The music was good, really good. We heard the word of God, and we said, this is where our family needs to be. And Bob tried to run me off several times. Oh, not on purpose. No, 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 he didn't try to run me off on purpose. He, he just offended me numerous times. <laughs> numerous times. Not on purpose. I had many opportunities, many. Everybody say many. Many opportunities to leave. Many good. I'm, I'm talking I had some excellent opportunities to leave Pastor Bob. Excellent. Didn't I, Amanda? There, there were times I'd cry. And beg God, let me go. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to make something out of something, but it's the honest truth. But no, this is where, and I, 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 you know I love Pastor Bob. I don't mean that in a negative way. The Sharplesses were here. He's great. And we, as a matter of fact, we talked the other day. We're, he, he loves me. I love him. And we, we worked through whatever issues we had. But there were times, and he probably wanted to run me off too. I'm sure there were times. <laughs> But you know, that's the way it works, right? Yeah. Miss Amanda's probably wanted to run me off a few times. <laughs> not really. Number two. Now, uh, not number two of my number five things, but number, and I'm going to, trust me, we're going to get on. Huh? Number one is get in a, a church where the word of faith is taught. Number two, get under a pastor that's teaching the word of faith. Put up uh, Ecclesiastes 8.4. Ecclesiastes 8.4 8, says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. That's all I need right there. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Now, he, here's what you need to know about pastor and about pastors. There are a lot of good pastors out there. As a matter of fact, you can go home today, and you can stream it right now if you want to, if you've got an earbud, and get a better message than I'm preaching right now as far as more exciting, more whatever, more, uh, as one lady said, we're not getting the Greek and Hebrew at Melody anymore. I got to go somewhere else. Yeah, that's what she said. So you could get all of that. You get everything you need and more somewhere else today if you need to. But you're not getting it from your church and your pastor. You hear me? I listen to a lot of preachers. I listen to WFDA 99.3. If you live in the city, you can get it. It's faith filled. It's faith, word of faith people. I listen to it all the time, all the time. And then sometimes I listen to other preachers. And I like to listen to them. But they're not my pastor. They're not speaking what this church needs to hear. And, and if, you, if you're not hearing what you need to hear here, then you need to go where you need to hear it. I, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying you need to hear where your church is. You need to be in your church, and you need to be hearing what that pastor said. It's not that other, you can hear other stuff, you, and you need to be studying on your own and listen to other preachers. That's all good. But you need to hear what the pastor at your church is saying. 
because God's put him there to speak to you. I don't know. I, I, I preach thousands. Everybody say thousands. Thousands of messages. If you include the radio programs I used to, five, ten, I'd do ten a week. If you, if you include all that, I've, I've preached thousands of messages over the decades. And, and every time I preach, especially on Sunday morning, I could name probably three or four that I made, uh, missed it on. But I believe every time I preached, it was exactly what the people at Melody needed to hear. Do you hear what I'm saying? Maybe the people over there didn't need to hear, but the people at Melody. So if you belong to Melody and are part of Melody, then you need to hear what the pastor of Melody is saying. Does that make sense? And you need to be in a church. I thank God for online. If we didn't have online, most churches probably, who knows what would happen if that had online with all this COVID thing. But you need to get your behind in a church. Thank you very much. You know I don't usually talk like that. Pastor Bob taught us something invaluable, and that was what Pastor Darren mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. Ephesians 4, 11, and 12, that uh, for God has given us the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher for, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Pastor Bob taught that. That was the foundation for this church. He took the commas out of for the work of the ministry because it sounds like that he gave the ministries for the work of the ministry, comma. For the edifying of the body of Christ, comma. But he gave it for the work of the ministry. He, he gave the, the uh, fivefold ministry to build up the body of Christ to do the work of the ministry. The best thing the pastor of your church can do is to teach you to believe for yourself. Doesn't mean you can't have somebody pray for you. Doesn't mean somebody can't visit you. But I'm going to tell you this. If you told me you only get one or the other, we talk a lot, Coach Mixon and I talk a lot about uh, uh, quarterbacks you know you, you 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 like to get a quarterback can run and throw but if you can only get one that can run or throw i'm gonna pick the throwing amen and if you could get a pastor that can do it all then praise god get him that can do it all but if you can only get one or the other if he can only visit you or teach you how to get healed yourself i'd say give me the guy that can teach me how to get it myself amen is there somebody here it's all good it's all important it's all important but but the thing that is important is that you learn the word of God so you can, uh, so that you can deal with things and and you can get what you need yourself. Where the word of a king is, there's power. Now listen to this. Uh, I, I went to the doctor, got a bad report years ago. And I was talking to Judy Summerall. She's back here, and she said, "You know, Pastor Frank, doctors' words are just words." Now, don't misunderstand me. My daughter's a doctor, and I respect the medical profession. If my daughter, my cardiologist, I was telling somebody about my cardiologist. Yeah, that sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? Oh, my God, he needs a cardiologist. You know, he's uh, like he's following me around like I might fall over or something like that. But, uh, you know, we say my doctor, my whatever. Uh, it, it makes it sound like you're really, really sick. But um, I was telling somebody about my cardiologist. I went to get my annual checkup because I, I, I believe in that. I believe you need to go get a checkup. I said, you need to go get a checkup. This is practical advice here, especially if you think something's going on in your body. So, uh, so I went, you know, I've been going for years, cardiologist, and, and uh, just to get checkup. And, and he told me, he's uh, probably 25 years younger than me, he said, I, I, we, I hope I'm as healthy as you are when I'm your age. And uh, he said, uh, you don't even need to come. I said, well, you're talking yourself out of a, you know, a job here, out of money. I said, I said Doc, I'm, I'm glad to pay you $35, my copay, to hear you tell me those kinds of words. Amen? How many of you would like to pay $35 and hear that? But here's the thing is, they're just words. Because I remember uh, somebody that told me that they had gotten a good report from the doctor, and about a month later, they died. So, so you you got to remember the words of a doctor, the words of an accountant, the words of a lawyer. They're words, too. Now I'm going to follow my accountant. I'm going to follow my uh, doctor. I'm going to listen to what they have to say. I'm going to listen to my lawyer. But the bottom line is we've got somebody higher, and that is Jesus. Amen? And that's really where we got to put our trust and our faith in 2021. I, I, we have Andrew Womack on our radio station here, and he was telling a story about how he had to get uh, a stress test because he was going to get some insurance. 
And he said, I went in there, and, and when it was over, the doctor pulled me aside and said, we got to get you in the hospital right away. you got to go see this other guy. you got to whatever, whatever. And you know, like you're going to die and all. And it, then he, after everything calmed down, he says, wait a minute. He, he, yeah, the test did whatever. He said, he said uh, well, you can go next week and see him. He said, well, you told me I was going to die. Anyways, he, he said, well, we see a little something there. He, he went home. He read up. Don't, hey, don't go to a web doctor MD. Amen. Stay away from that. Stay away from that stuff. But he did go find out that those tests were not 100% accurate. And he went and he, uh, he got a, another one. And they said, your, health, your heart's healthy as a horse. They said they, they either did it wrong or whatever, whatever. So sometimes the medical profession can miss it. The legal profession can, be, can miss it. You got to be sure that you're getting God's word because where the word of a king is, there is power. Amen. And speaking God's word over your life. Lord, I thank you that I'm healthy. I thank you that, that I have no pain in my body. I thank you that I have no illness in my body. I thank you that all my organs are healthy. I thank you that all of my systems work in Jesus' name. I wish, I told my Amanda this morning, I wish I had confessed years ago. Lord, I thank you that I have all of my hair. I, I, I did about my teeth. I said, I want my teeth, but I didn't worry about my hair. I wish I'd have confessed it. How many of you believe it would have worked? Let's just review real quick. One, stay under the word of faith. Two, stay under an anointed pastor. Three, stay in a word church. Can somebody say amen? amen. The rest of them is going to go quicker. Number two, don't necessarily go by your experiences and others. This is a tough one here, folks. This is a tough one. Most of us have had many, many I don't want to. I don't want to call them failures because I, I don't want to make. I don't want any of us to feel guilty, like we're bad or we didn't do good or we miss. L listen, we live in a fallen world. There are bad things. Bad things happen. I remember Pastor Bob, his friend uh, Steve Ingram was the band leader for Kenneth Copeland back in the day. This was back in the '80s. And they invited Pastor Bob to go out to Anaheim for the Anaheim Convention and play in the band in Kenneth Copeland Convention. It was a big deal to, to our church. So he, he went out there, and he said while, while he was there, there was a band member in, the, in the, Kenneth Copeland's band whose wife, a young lady, he was a young guy, had gotten killed in a, an accident. A train had hit the car and killed her. And he said uh, he was, you know, this is Kenneth Copeland's band. You know, God protect all this kind of stuff. And, you know, bad things don't happen to you, and that's all the devil. And he, he just could not understand how that ha had happened. And he said he was praying one day. That's what this, this band member said. He was praying one day, and the Lord said to him, it was an accident. How many of you know sometimes they're just accidents? How many of you know sometimes we can't explain everything? Somebody asked me not long ago something just, you know, bad had happened. They said, Pastor Frank, can you explain this? I said, I, I, I can't explain this. But, but let me tell you this. I, I'd rather have one word from God than a thousand failed ex experiences. Amen? I'd rather have one word from God. I'd rather, I'd rather still believe, I'd rather still believe than, than, than to not believe. It, it, it's important, your words. Everybody say, my words. Now, is it all right, Barbara, if I just share this? I was talking to Barbara yesterday, uh, and she, she hadn't been able to come to church or drive herself because she's, her eyes, her doctor told I'm, I'm not going to get all this right, but I'm going to get the gist of it. Her doctor told her in 25 years of practice, he's never seen the condition she had. He, he told her she's going blind. That's what he told her. And he was so sorry. He felt so bad for her, and he, he, he held her hands and, you know, just said, I just feel, I, I wish I could help you, and all, on and on and on and on. Well, what did you do, Miss Barbara? You believed God, right? She believed God, and she told me she's got a car, and she's coming to church today. I said, how did that happen? She said, the doctor said it's a miracle. I said, the doctor said it's a miracle. I'm going to tell you something. If a doctor tells you you're going blind, they're words. Amen? And you better start putting the word of a king in, uh, uh, where there's power and begin putting that in your life. Can you say Amen.
<laughs> so how many of you, if you get a diagnosis from a doctor, you're going to believe God and trust the word of God. Amen. And listen, hey, listen to your doctor. You still listen to him, right? Of course. Absolutely. 100%. If a doctor told me to get up at 3 a.m. and take the medicine, I'm going to get up at 3 a.m. and take the medicine, and I'm going to believe God too. Amen? I'm going to be like Craig Hagan. If I decide that if there's a tumor in my head, I'm going to decide to have it out. I'm going to believe the surgeon's going to be able to get, take it out, and I'm going to recover quickly. Amen? Can somebody say amen? Real quickly, Matthew 19, 26. So you, you can't go by others' experiences, but you've got to go by it. But Jesus looked to them and said to them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So I, I, I was going through a crisis here many years ago, and, uh, and, and, and I was looking for something, anything in the Word of God that would help me. And I found this scripture, and I, I came home and I said to Amanda, if this, by, if this scripture is not true, then none of them are true. I've got to believe that there's some hope. Whatever situation you're in today, whatever it may be, no matter how bad it may be, if it's a doctor who has 25 years experience that knows more about uh, bleeding in the eyes than you do, that says that you're going blind, you need some scripture that you can hang your hat on, as they say. You've got to have some scripture that you can believe. And, and, and uh, Barbara believed that scripture with God, all things. Everybody say all things. All things are possible. You need to hang on to something. I can't explain everything. Yes, ma'am. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. Number three. Number three, don't blame God or attribute evil to him. Don't blame God or attribute evil to him. Let me just quote these scriptures. You know these. John 10.10 10 says, The thief, everybody say the thief, comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What do thieves come to do? They come to steal, right? Who is the thief? The, devil. the devil's the thief, right? I mean, that's pretty, cl pretty plain. Acts 10.38, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing what? Everybody say good. good. And healing. Everybody say healing. healing. Everybody say all. all. Those who were what? Oppressed of whom? Of the devil. How many of you know that's pretty clear? For God was with him. James 1.17. It says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from uh, our, our Father in heaven comes down from heaven who is, uh, uh, has no variance or shadow of turning. How many of you know that every good gift and every perfect gift come down, comes down from God? It's tempting sometimes uh, to blame God. Let me get, get, just tell you this story. You can look it up later. Job chapter 2. You can look up where uh, Job had been afflicted. He lost everything. Do you remember he lost his family? He, he lost his uh, property. He lost his prosperity. Uh, he, he actually lost his health. Remember, he was, had boils all over his body. He, he, lo he lost everything, basically, and the, and the devil was afflicting him. And what did his wife come out and say? She said, curse God and live. He said, I'm not going to curse God. When we, when we attribute evil to him, are we not cursing God? Why would we claim or say that God did bad things to us? Bad, here, turn your name and say, bad things happen? That's obvious. It's obvious, but God didn't do those bad things. You, you, you know what? They would, the, the sheriff, the sheriff of this county would come lock you up. You would be tried before a jury of your peers, and you would go to jail for years, years, if you did to your children what people claim God do, does to his. Can somebody say amen? You know I'm telling the truth. Let's, let's, re, let's review this one right quick. One, this is, this is good. The devil is the oppressor. We were reviewing back there. Dev, the devil is the oppressor. You got that one? The devil, you don't have that? Okay. Number one, the devil is the oppressor. Number two, God is good, devil is bad. Say that with me. Say, God is good, God is good. devil is bad. God is bad. We were in Haiti first time we went down there, and I was speaking to the people up in the villages and into, uh, up into the mountains, and I was preaching this message. 
God is good, devil is bad. Somebody said, Pastor Frank, they, they understand that. I'm trying to make it simple. And I thought, well, they understand it better than people back in my church. Can somebody say amen? amen. Number three, don't curse God. All right, num number four of my five spiritual things to do. We're winding it up right here. Do something. Everybody say do something. Do something. Everybody say do something. But not just anything or everything. That's right. Not just anything or everything. Thank you very much. You, you, you know, we, 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 can't, we can't work to get what God's already done for us. How many of you know that? How many of you know God's already done it? The Bible says, Jesus said himself, it is finished. Amen? We're trying to work to get something that God has already done for us. I, I, I know, and I get this way too. You probably do too. So something bad comes your way. So what do we begin to do? We begin to pray in tongues. We begin to fast. We begin to read our Bible. We get back in church. We, we begin, we, oh, I didn't give enough. We start giving. We're trying to do all of these things. All of those are good. Some of those might be hindrances to your receiving from God because you may be in rebellion, all of that stuff. But, you know, just because you do a lot of things is not necessarily uh, the reason God is going to bless you or help you. Amen? we got to realize God's already done it. I remember hearing this story. I, I'm sure it wasn't funny at the time, but I, I would watch these uh, um, testimonies of these POWs in Vietnam, American POWs in Vietnam. They're very, they're very powerful if you've never watched some of these testimonies of these men. But they said that they would take them down at night and they would torture them uh, in the Han Hanoi Hilton, and then they would send them back, you know, to their wherever they were, their cell. And what, they took one guy down, and, and he came back, and, uh, uh, one POW down, and, and he came back, and his friends asked him, they said, you know, what happened? How did it go? He said, I got religion. And they said, well, which one? He said, all of them. <laughs> How many of you know when you're being tortured, you're trying to reach, you, you're trying to get, you, you're calling on everything you know. I'm going to do this, but you can't. It, it, Jesus, everybody say, he's already done it. <laughs> Jesus has already done what you need done. Jesus has already re uh, uh, received or, or, or captured or gotten the victory for us. Amen? So we, we, need, to do, we need to do things. We need to, we, need to, we need to do things. God provided for us before we even needed. Do you remember when he, created, when he created the heaven and the earth? When he created the earth, did he create man first? No. Who did he create? What did, who, when did he create man? He created man last. Everybody say man last. He created everything we needed, and then he created man. But you know, when he created the banana, he expected Adam to peel the banana. Amen? How many of you know you've got to peel the banana? The Bible says in Deuteronomy 8, 18, that God has given us the power, everybody say the power, to get wealth. But how many of you know you've got to go get the wealth? So there's something you do, but, but you do, that's faith. Faith is not something that so much moves God as it is that it puts us in a position to receive what God has already done for us. Come on up, uh, Travis, please. I think, I, I think that we, we've got to understand that what else can God do? You know, I heard this preacher say one time, well, you know, healing is not in the redemption. If it's not in the redemption, then where is it? Is healing not redemptive? Is that not a redemptive power of God? What, where is healing if it's not in the redemption? Where's your prosperity if it's not in the redemption? Where's your free mind? Pastor Darren talks about being free of depression. If that's not in the redemption, then somebody tell me where it is. It's all in the redemption, everything. And, and when did Jesus redeem us from these things? When he went to the cross at Calvary and gave his life and shed his blood, he gave us all that we have need of. So faith a lot of times is not so much, well, we got to move God. Well, well, I understand that concept, but, but more likely what we've got to do is receive what God has already done. Put up Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. L l listen to this. I'm going to read this in a little, little different way. For by grace you have been healed through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Did you get that? Did you go back? Go, go, go back again. Go back again. For by grace you have been healed. Everybody say healed. Well, it says saved, doesn't it? Do you get healing any different way? Is there a different way of receiving healing? Of receiving from God? Is there a different way than that? Is there a different? Tell me what it is. Oh, pray in tongues four hours a day? 
Read the Bible through in a year? Pay your tithe every Sunday? Explain to me how you get from God anything. Isn't it all the same? Is there somebody here? If you go home, can you say amen? For by grace you have been healed through faith. And it's not of yourselves. It, healing is the gift of God. It, go ahead, put the rest of it up. It's not of works. What's not of works? Healing. Lest anyone should boast. Should you do some things? Of course you should do some things. I remember this guy told this story. He was kind of a tough dad. and His son turned 14 or whatever. And he took him down to one of these grocery stores, Winn-Dixie or whatever, to get a job. He's, he said, son, you need to get a job, so I'm going to take you down to the place. And so the, the, the kid went in and stayed in there a little while and came back. And his dad said, did you get a job? Winn-Dixie, Winn whatever store, Publix. His son was proud. He said, dad, I got an application. His dad said, I didn't tell you to get an application. I told you to get a job. <laughs> Amen. How many of you know we got a... What we've been doing, I think, with God a lot of times is we've been getting the application. I'm getting the application to be healed. I'm getting the application to receive whatever it is. No, no. God said, it's already there. The job's there. The whatever's there. Get it. Can somebody say amen? Last thing. Last one. Number five. Remain faithful. Or someone may say, have the patience of Job. And I, I, want to, I want us to read this from Job 42. Can, can you, I almost, well, I'm going to go over here and read it. Let's just read this here. So Job had all these bad things happen to him. Do you know how long that lasted? I think somebody said it was nine months. And then somebody did the figure, and they said he was blessed with twice as much as what he had. I know he lost his family. I, know, I don't know how you can replace that, but still. Listen to this. Chapter uh, Job 42, 12. It says, Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters, and he called the name of the first Jemimah, the name of the second Keziah, and the name of the third Karen Hapuk. In all the land were found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. You know, I think, how I many of you know I got four daughters? Well, I got, I got three natural daughters, and, and uh, Jess is just like my daughter, so she's my daughter. How I many of you know I got four beautiful daughters? Can you get any, ble any more blessed than that? I'm telling you, and some of my sons-in-law are good-looking. <laughs> yeah, they're all good-looking. How I many of you know that? And, a and after this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and grandchildren for four generations. So Job died old and full of days. He was full of prosperity. Can somebody say amen? He hung in there. I said he hung in there. He didn't quit. He remained faithful. He remained faithful to God's call, to what God had told him. I'll close with this short story. Miss Sandy Cook is here. Her mama was one of our founding members, I'd say. I think she was here the first year. Wasn't she here the first year? And uh, what? Wow, she was, she's one of, the, one of the first. She just passed away here a year ago. She's 92. And uh, she's the most remarkable person I know. She'd be one of those most unforgettable persons. But... Um, Miss, uh, we, we visited her, and she, she um, right before she passed away, here, here's how God works. So we all visited her, and everybody visited her. She was waiting for one niece, well, a niece, and her niece had gotten held up or something, and, and that they thought she was coming, but she didn't. She was at her home over here. And finally, uh, her uh, niece got there and visited, and within how long did she die? Fifteen minutes after the niece got there, she went on to be with the Lord. Here's what she told me. Now, I know I, she had gotten cancer back previously. And, and here, here, here's, here's what she told me just before she died. She said, I'm not dying of cancer. Hear me now. Somebody said, well, she had it. Well, let me tell you something. We've all had bad things. I, you, 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 you know, I, I confess, I confess, uh, I confess every day. No COVID 19s coming near me. I confess that over folks I know that got it. Am I going to quit? Am I going to quit confessing it? No. 
You, you know, I, I, I've led somebody to the Lord one time, and then I prayed for somebody that I didn't lead them to. They didn't want to be led to the Lord. Am I going to quit trying to lead people to the Lord? No. Let, let, hear me now. So she got cancer, and she's, she's got other complications. And here, here she is. I'm, I'm talking to her, and she said, Pastor Frank, Remember now, she, she didn't die until 15 minutes after. She, who decided? Did the devil take her? No, she. Who decided when she went? Because do you think the devil would have taken her out if he had anything to do with it? Do you think he'd have taken her out earlier before she saw the niece? Of course. He's the devil. That's why they call him the devil. Because he's the devil. Here's what she told me. She said, tell them. This is what she said to say. Tell them the big C didn't get me. That's what she said to say. Tell them the big C didn't get me. Somebody says, well, she had, and the doctors, and the whatever said, and everybody looked at her said, and they know, I'm going to tell you this, I don't care what she had in her body, the big C didn't get her. Now, Somebody says, I don't even know if that makes sense. Well, I'm going to tell you this. Whatever you get, whatever happens to you, if you go bankrupt, you just keep saying, bankruptcy's not going to take me out. I'm not going out. I'm not bankrupt. You know, you can act unrighteous, but that doesn't make you unrighteous. L listen to me here. You can act unrighteous, but that does not make you an unrighteous person. You are the righteousness of God in Christ if you're in Christ. You shouldn't have acted unrighteous. You were stupid. You were dumb. You were disobedient. You were sinful. But you are not. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Let's stand to our feet. You may have something, but you are not that. That's not who you are, and that's not what you are. You're the hill of the Lord. I said, you're the hill of the Lord. Say that with me. Say, I'm the hill of the Lord. Let's go into 2021 and say, I'm the hill of the Lord. Say, here's what I said. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Say, all of my organs work properly. Say, all of my systems are working properly. Say, I have no pain in my body. Say, I have no illness in my body. Oh, oh, Pastor Frank, if I, no, no, I, I get you. I understand. I, I hear what you're saying. But we're saying something else. 25 years experience, you're going blind. Lord, I thank you that I will not go blind and will not go dim, but I will see all of the days of my life. I thank you that my vision is increasing and not de decreasing. Thank God for the doctors. Thank God for them. And listen to them and do what they say. But you do what God says to you. Say, say this to me. Say, I'm prosperous. I'm going to prosper more and more in 2021. I'm blessed. I'm happy. I have joy. I have peace. Do you believe that? Somebody says, can you just say it and it happened? Well, I tell you, you can say the other and it definitely will happen. You're an idiot, son. You'll never amount to anything. You'll never go anywhere. You're going to end up in prison. You're going to be on drugs all of your life. I know everybody don't end up that way that's had that said to them, but a lot of them do. What, who knows? If you can speak to plants and it makes a difference, I think you can speak to the human spirit, the human heart. And it can. It, look, they've done studies on this. This is not some mumbo jumbo superstition I'm sharing with you here today they've actually done studies that say that if you speak positive words I mean even in the natural it works if you got a crop in the field today you better go out there and start speaking over it okay I'm done bow your head father thank you thank you for your word that gives us hope thank you for your word that gives us hope thank you father that even though all of us have have failed we've we've missed it we've had bad things happen to us we've had tragedies or, or accidents or we haven't seen what we believed for 
I thank you, Father, that that doesn't change that you are a good God, that you want the best for us, and that we can still believe, and that we can still speak the word of God. Where your word is, there is power, Lord. So we speak the power of your word over everything we set our hand to. We thank you for it. I bless these people going into this new year. I say that they're all prosperous and blessed, strong in the Lord, and that you're going to do great things through our church. Thank you for pastors, dear and Laura, encouraging them, sending people to strengthen them and to help them and encourage them and keeping our church strong. Well, thank you that we're going to increase more and more and that we're going to achieve and to do the will of God, that we're going to see lives changed and souls saved. We thank you for that. We bless you in the name of Jesus and everybody said. Everybody said amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for your indulgence. I went a little longer than I normally would, but I thank you so much. I love you. Bless you.